But the time is now. The time is now. So much more, more than ever before. But the time is now what's up family and welcome back to the channel thank you guys for stopping by the channel if you're new to the channel welcome for those of you who've been with me for a while welcome back so let's go ahead and get into this video about the eclipse so i want to give you guys some background so a few years ago um i had got to a point that you know i was like oh i don't have anything else to really talk about with the stars and um so i decided you know i wasn't going to talk about it anymore and Imagine, you know, you telling God what you're going to do, <laughs> you know, like you're just not going to talk about the stars anymore. And I remember going to work early one morning and I walked out the house and I felt this strong presence and it just stopped me right in the middle of my tracks. And I had like this reverence. So I had to stop what I was doing. If you guys hear noise in the background, like the wind blowing, we just acknowledge the ancestors in the wind. If you hear the airplane and the birds, I'm recording outside. So I apologize. But this is my natural environment. <laughs> um, so I, I, I just paused, like in just in reverence. I just reverence just came over me. And I turned around, I looked at the clouds, and I saw this. And I don't even know how to articulate what I felt, but I, I was able to get my camera out and take a picture. You know, some people looking at this might be like, oh, that's nothing. But for me, I knew it meant something. I, I remember walking away from that experience, like, what was this, you know, trying to say? Like, what was what was this all about? And I remember, like, a couple days later, I was scrolling through my computer. And if you've been with me for a while, you remember when I first initially started talking about the stars, there was this book called Witness of the Stars that I used to reference a lot. And I started, I was scrolling through, and I saw the book. If those of you remember, this was not the original cover of the book for those of you that remember. But when I saw this, it looked, it reminded me of, you know, it reminded me of what I was seeing in the clouds. And let's go back, see? Now, this is Scorpio, the scorpion. And this is, deals with, Scorpio deals with the subconscious. Right. In the Hebrew alphabet, it represents none, the fish, subconscious. Right. And um, so I knew when I saw this that I was being told, no, you're not finished talking about the stars. You're not. And you're going to have to wait. Patience. And, and, and when I realized that, OK, I'm not finished, then the next thing you have to realize is that the virtue of patience, right? And so I knew that eventually the rest of this was gonna unfold to me. And sure enough, it was because what I was being taught was to be able to recognize symbolism, right? Symbolism, um, the symbols or image speaks louder than words. So let's get into this solar eclipse that's happening today. 
because I'm recording the day of the actual eclipse. And I came in singing because the energy is so strong right now. This is also a new moon. And it's also the year of the dragon wood, according to Chinese astrology. Now, Chinese don't really have an astrology, but according to Chinese cosmology, this is also the year of the dragon wood. Now, dragon, a lot of people, when they hear the word dragon, they have a negative connotation. But if you remember, the ancients always put names on these um, frequencies and attributes of God. So when you think of the dragon, the dragon represents a force that is very, um, can be very aggressive. It's coming in to get work done, right? Um, for those of you who have set goals this year, this is the energy. This is the spirit that can move you into that, getting things done, right? Um, when you see the dragon coming, spitting the fire out of that, its mouth, that's purification. And the wood element is um, resonates with wind, air, spirit, okay, the mind, right? So here we see... a uh, purification of the mind um a force that can move um that can move us in the right direction but also i think it's important to recognize that if you're not aligned with the force and with the spirit then what happens is it can become a very domineering energy right where it's you you will see aggressiveness greediness um wars right and so what we'll see on the world stage is we'll see more wars you know um more oppression trying to resonate trying to be enforced um rights you know and but but you're also going to see a lot of people um actually rebelling against the system you're going to see more people rioting um more people just saying hey i'm not putting up with this anymore you're going to see that a lot because that's what the force is coming in to make a change right the revolution is not going to be televised this revolution is happening within the hearts of men and women all over the world but it's going to take good men and women to stand up and make a change. If some of you remember, if you've been with me for a while, um, going into 2023, I said that this would be the year, that would be the year of exposure. Now, if we look at the end of the year, that's exactly what happened. People start exposing, you know, and I told you guys that the tables have to shift. This is according to cycles and me looking at the energy and understanding it it moves in cycles if we go back a whole 360 years from now which is a whole circle a cycle 360 years from back you would see that that will also land you in another dragon year and if you look at some of the things that happened in that year they had a lot of war and unrest and then the next year after they had um, a lot of that's when the blue 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 bonnet plague um came out if i'm not mistaken so everything moves in cycles and i did a video years ago that said there was going to be a switch in the government and it, it, it was going to be a change right the guards would have to change now a lot of people are saying well i don't see this happening this didn't happen yet Everything happens in divine timing, but we have to be the change we want to see. Like Maya Angelou said, it takes us standing up and being the change that we want to see. So let's get into this eclipse, right? So the whole, the solar eclipse, the solar eclipse holds significant symbolic meaning across many cultures. Um, often representing moments of activation and transformation. For a lot of people, it's 
has negative connotations, but for the most part, an eclipse me is has to deal with activation, right? Now, the eclipse occurring in Aries carries a deep connotation because we know that Aries is um, represent, the constellation Aries represents the head, right? But it also corresponds to the Hebrew alphabet, to Zadi. Now, I could be messing up on some of these names, guys. <laughs> I apologize. But it corresponds to the Hebrew letter to Zadi which symbolizes righteousness. And I wanna just say something about righteousness. Righteousness means right thinking. Or right way of thinking. And it's, Tzadi also is, also means integrating the divine mind into our psyche. Right. And, and and this has a lot to do with, you know, ancient spiritual practices and the solstice, specifically the winter solstice, because it's cold outside. This would be a time for people to um, go within. Right. And reprogram their psyche with the mind of God. And these were ancient practices, which, you know, a lot of people don't know about them. They've been removed from the masses because you think about it. If we really start moving in our spiritual knowledge and power, um, there's a level of um, liberation that comes with that and empowerment. And, you know, people aren't able to oppress and use you, right? Because think of it, look at this whole structure. It's the world is being ran by just a few people in correlation to, in terms of the masses, how do you get the masses to do what you want, right? There has to be something that is being done to keep the masses in line and keep a certain amount of people in power and the rest not in power or oppressed, you know? So we have to think about all those things, but getting back to the eclipse, when you look at Tazadi, it embodies the essence of one who strives to uphold the image of God, which is their true nature. We're the spiritual divine beings. And this is our true nature. As a spiritual divine being, you have the ability to hear from God directly for guidance, each and every one of us. We all have that ability. And a lot of the systems now teach you that you have to go find this outside of yourself, but you are a spiritual divine being. And you have that ability to hear from God directly from the guide for the guidance that you need. And also part of your true nature is that happiness is the enjoyment of good things in life when you have them and the peace when you don't have them. This is a part of your nature. So that you're not like the shaft that's blowing in the wind. You know, if something good happens in your life, then, you know, we get into a habit where we start chasing that good feeling all the time, right? But if we stay in a more neutral state, that even in the good times and the bad times, we are in a state of peace, right? Then when bad things happen, we don't lose it. And when good things happen, we don't lose our minds also, right? The Tao talks about this a lot. Research also says that sorrow, fear, loss, anger, grief, worry, all of these things lower your IQ. It also lowers your brain performance and it destroys your vital organs in your body, right? And when you do this, it's, it's hard for the spirit of God to move through you. Because remember, like if you're in fear, if you're sick, if you all have all these things, loss and grief, all these things going on within you, you, you definitely don't have that time 
to put into your spiritual practices. Okay, so this is why, you know, we live in a system that tries to keep us in fear, in grief, in loss, right? Because when we're in those things, we can't elevate, all right? So Tazadi is also the pursuit of truth and justice. I have to take a moment. The wind is blowing and acknowledge the ancestors in the wind. We give thanks for your guidance and the enlightenment that we're going to receive today. Tazadi is shaped like a nun. Now, if we look at Tazadi, it's shaped like a nun, you have the nun here, which represents Scorpio, the astrological sign Scorpio. Scorpio deals with your subconscious, right? It's the fish. And then you have a yod over here. Yod represents the arm or the hand of God. And this signifies the essence of the creator residing within those who are humble, open to learn, and righteous. That's what humble is, being open to learn. You know, it says that we have to be like a child again to enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? We have to put down some, some things that we believe to have been truth. And we've moved into an age where it's no longer about what we believe, it is about what we know, right? It's about what we know. So Tazadi also reflects the journey of every individual confronting their own inner struggles and striving for restoration. This is a lifetime work. This is not something that you get right in one setting. And if you make mistakes, guys, it's okay. We live in a world where it's like we're taught that we're not allowed to make mistakes. That's how we learn. Some mistakes can be avoided, but still in the learning process, we learn. But still in the process, we learn, okay? So when you make mistakes, self-correct and move on, okay? We're never defeated and we're never stuck. Now, interestingly, um, the word Melchizedek um, means king and also one who teaches. And it contains the component of Zedek. If we look here, the end of this word right here is Zedek. Now, Zedek um, means righteousness. Now, this also, parallel, par this also parallels with the righteous individual in Tazadi. And this person is inviting the presence of the divine within, right? That's what Tazadi is all about. This person is righteous. They've allowed the mind of God to take control and move in their being, the psyche, the soul, okay? Seven years ago, the great American eclipse carved a path through North America, and now the eclipse completes the cross intersecting over Little Egypt in Southern Illinois. Now, when we think of um, Egypt, we think of people being released from um, oppression, and we also identify it with a particular landmass. The intersection of both of these eclipses is happening over a place called Cairo, Egypt in Southern Illinois. And what I have here on the screen is one of the mounds that they've actually tried to cover up. <laughs> and all throughout North America, actually, you have these type of um, mounds and pyramids um, and actual pyramid text in a lot of these places as well. And so I was, you know, I sat down and I was like, well, it's not a coincidence that it's happening over Egypt, little Egypt here in North America. There's, there's not, there's, I mean, anyone looking at this, you have to know that there is some deeper meaning here. 
I want us to just remember that the world used to be one landmass at one time. And what's so funny is I was at work one day um, and I was playing with the one of the um, students' puzzle. And this is a world map. And so what I did was, you can see here, I took it out of the frame and I put it together and all the pieces just fit together so perfectly. Now, the ancients used to call the earth a dragon. They used to call it the two dragon lands, east and west. They used to call them two dragon lands. And as I was putting this together, I don't know, it just could be me, you guys, but to me, this looked like a dragon. Okay, the head would be here. This would be the eye, right? And if you, before, you know, everything was moved apart, if you put all these pieces back together, you can see how close everything was. You would see that Egypt would be in the center right here in this area. And that North America and South America was actually would be very close and be like in so close proximity to it, right? And now the eclipse is happening right here in the head. <laughs> and Australia would be like the tail. <laughs> this is just me. This is how my mind is putting it together. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think of this, right? You, I mean, you could just look at it and see. See, our ancestors, they had an intimate, which you would call an inner relationship with God directly. And as the consciousness dis um, declined, we lost that inner relationship with God but with the divine. We lost that because if you see now, everything is, we're looking at things outside of ourselves or we look to others to define God for us. Now in these schools, they taught the initiates how to regain that relationship again through certain spiritual practices. In these mystery schools, they spent time decoding the pyramid text. See, the Western world, it has, the Western world does not have respect for ancient cultures. They, they say that the Egyptians were worshiping other gods, right? Um, but when you actually really closely study them, you understand that the ancient Egyptians understood that these were attributes of God that you could actually tune into to help you in life and assist you. They actually understood these two, the attributes of God, right? So when you look at this, you just see images, but all of these mean something. The actual hieroglyphs that you see here, right? This represents spirit. And the alphabets that you see, it represents like day-to-day -day things. And if I, just to break it down, it represents things that happen in matter, physical things like day-to-day -day life, government systems, you know? And really, when you when you understand a little bit more, the hieroglyphs deal with the right side of the brain and the alphabet deal with the left. So that was a complete whole language system, right? Because you need both sides of your brain working. But they completely, now when you just see just the alphabets by itself, they completely are just focusing straight with the left side of your brain. They remove the right side of your thinking process. Are you guys following me? This was done on purpose. Because the right side of your brain is the spiritual side. It's the intuitive side. That's why Yeshaya always said, cast your nets to the right side. Meaning you need to tune into the spiritual side. And this is where we're talking about images and symbolism, that it means more than what we think it meant. 
Now, these pyramid texts actually gave clear directions on how to establish this union between God and man. Because our ancient ancestors initially were able to have this communion. But as the world declined, like I said, the consciousness declined, this was lost. So these ancients, they put these things on pyramid text so it, that it can go down word of mouth. That's, that's how our cultures, you know, these cultures work. We pass things down word of mouth, right? And we see this in um, during slavery when the women used to quilt. When they would quilt, they were actually telling a story which was telling the other slaves how to escape, how to get away so that the master, you know, wouldn't know what they were saying. They cloaked things. This has been something that we've always done. Hide it right here in plain sight. So one of the things I want to talk about when you're talking about universities and colleges, right? They're only as good as their library. Because in the library, you're able to do research and you also get access to records. So when they burnt down Alexandria, they knew exactly what they were doing because a lot of ancient records were, um, were taken away as well as they were stolen. A lot was stolen, right? But if you go deeper into the ancient records, you would know who these people that were actually teaching the geometries, who were teaching the sciences. They were civilized people, you guys. And you always know, I want y'all to think about history. Whenever they say these people aren't civilized, always know they were civilized. <laughs> they call them savages on civil, no, always know they were civilized. As a matter of fact, all the sciences, everything we know about the body, we know about nature, we know about the metaphysical world. There was a people who taught this, and I'm not taking away from anyone, but we cannot erase history. If you don't give them acknowledge who they were, who these people were that taught this great knowledge and wisdom and history, because they were able, they had ascended to the point where they were able to integrate the mind of God within them, that this is why they were able to bring these ancient with this ancient wisdom into the world. Right? We have to acknowledge that. But when we don't acknowledge that, but they know why they don't acknowledge it, because then you have to, then you're going to understand some things about who the people were. So a lot of them that taught these mystery schools, when they came in and started conquering and all those things, they went underground. A lot of their stuff was stolen, but they spread out to different parts of the world. And they secretly continued to pass this information and wisdom down. And one of the things that's happening here now is that a lot of us don't have access to our family who knew certain things. Some of you do. Like for me, I, you know, I'm, my family's Jamaican and Panamanian. So there's some things that were taught. But what they weren't bucking on is that this was placed in your DNA. This information, this wisdom is placed in your DNA. And throughout aeons and ages, there have been people who have been able to ascend and merge their, integrated their mind with God and was able to bring forth certain wisdoms back into the wor world. Now, also what I found very interesting. Now, when we talk about these initiates, they were called neophytes. And this is a person who is new to a subject, skill, or belief. That's who they were. These people who were in the mystery schools, they were called neophytes. 
a book that I would suggest that you get if you don't have it is called the, the Three Initiates, The Kabbalion. This is this would give you a little bit more insight. I think it's much more of an easier read for especially those who are trying to understand these type of things. This is a book I would suggest. So the initiates, they went in and they had to learn the um to decode the hieroglyphics. If you look here, you see this woman right here. She's carrying the staff. And this right here. Now, the staff represented your inner forces. And the instrument here represented outside forces. How you have to merge your inner force so that it was able to master your external, right? And what they're carrying here represented healing, right? So, and these represent the different spirits and they also represent the astrological bodies, okay? And I spoke about that before. And if we take a closer look here, let me move this out the way. You see the hand, you see the different alphabets, and what's interesting is that when you look uh, at the Hebrew alphabet, you, you see similarities here. All systems, whether you're talking about the Tao, the ancient Chinese, the Hinduism, um, the Celts, the Druids, all of them, they're always going to say they took, they got something from the ancient Egyptians. Right? Even the... Um, Kabbalah. So what I thought was really interesting, guys, is that when we hear about Joseph Smith and he talks about and we talk about the Nephites in the Book of Mormon, right? Now, I just brought this up and this is what I got, right? But what I thought was really interesting here is their name. Because like I've just said that the initiates were called neophytes, right? And so here, don't be alarmed because this is just a play on words and it's done deliberately. The initiates in the mystery schools, they were called ne neophytes. Joseph Smith was allegedly a Freemason. And I say allegedly because I wasn't there, but he was allegedly known to be a Freemason. Now, Freemasons just rep means architect, builder, like how Yeshia was a carpenter. They're builders. What are you building? You're building Solomon's temple. What does Solomon's temple represent? It represents you, the house, right? That god comes into right so these people <laughs> they understood the mysteries joseph smith being a freemason he was not allowed or permitted to reveal the ancient mysteries he wasn't allowed to do that so if you look at a lot of his work, I can tell that it's still very surface thing. When you look at his work, when you look at Joseph Smith's work, um, it's still very exoteric, very phys on the outside, physical. He touches the esoteric, the inner work, just the inner stuff, just a little bit, but not a lot. Because remember, it was secrecy. It's inner wisdom. It's, it's, you're not supposed to speak on it out loud right a lot of them they these um the freemasons they they have a lot of this information and a lot of them are have distorted it as well okay but everything's coming out now because what's happening is a lot of us are having dreams 
A lot of us are having dreams. Stuff is being downloaded into us. A lot of you guys, it's not your first time in this rodeo. You travel through aeons. And that's what the sealed portion was trying to discuss a little bit. But you guys, we've been so psychologically brainwashed that all the ancient civilizations talk about reincarnation, right? They don't want you to understand that over here. But once you understand that you are a divine spark, you can be used whenever the divine wants to use you, especially if you ascended. You come back in and you, you have to go through everything else like everybody else, but you come back in to teach, to be the example, to help. Prepare ye the way. <laughs> they allude to this a little bit in the Bible, but they don't go fully in it. Because the Bible was used to weaponize, as a weapon for these ancient civilizations. We'll go into that in a few minutes. So me personally, I believe Joseph Smith knew a lot. And he spoke of... So me personally, I believe Joseph Smith knew a lot. And he spoke about some things, but he did not go into full detail. Because he definitely did not reveal who these people really were. And when and, and and this right here, this is not who this is not them. This is not a representation of who these people really were. Because the hue is all the way off. Okay. The hue is all the way off. And this is no disrespect to anyone. But we cannot continue to just erase history and rewrite history. Because there are a lot of people who they could benefit from understanding that their people were very into intelligent people, kings, pharaohs, great people who taught this world. You know how empowered they would be? Hmm. But you got to divide and conquer. See, the Bible was composed in 1611. And if you go back to times before that and a little after that, it was very hard for these conquerors and a lot of the Aryan um, nations to come in and take over in these places. It was hard because these people had tight spiritual practices. Let's take, for instance, over in Jamaica. Um, Queen Nanny. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Queen Nanny. She was a maroon um, in Jamaica. That's my country people them. But Queen Nanny was, they call her Granny Nanny of the Maroons. And if you go back and you understand who the Maroons are. But this was like in the 18th century, but she was a leader of the Jamaican Maroons. She led a community of slaves. Right, and they whipped the British, you know what, for a few years. They weren't able to dominate them and take them over. Right. And they said she used what's called obia. Right. And one thing I do notice, because I just been um led to study certain things that they demonize. And a lot of these practices were healing practices. Yes, they've been distorted, but a lot of them were high level spiritual practices of healing, of integrating your mind back with the divine mind. And so what a lot of these colonists did, these colonizers did, was demonize their um, spirituality and give them the Bible and teach it to them in a way that would remove them from doing their spirituality. So they use it as a weapon right? The Bible was compiled from many different writings, many different ancient teachings. 
from different cultures. You know, this is hard for a lot of people to swallow. And I get it because I was there too. Right? But a lot of these, like the, when you look at the French, the um, the Haitian Revolution that happened over in Haiti, right? How they whipped the British butt, you know? So they had to bring something in, a religious system in that would remove and, and, and actually tell the people, permit them from practicing their spirituality because that's the only way they were going to be able to get in and infiltrate. They had to come in with something and also divide and conquer, right? So those of us who, when they brought in the guns and the money and the sensuality, um, it appealed to some of us and we sold out and that's how they were able to gain access. And we see that now, even in Hollywood, you know? You see that people chasing money or chasing status and power would agree to use their talent to bring and promote smut into the communities, right? Because it's about them and what they want. They want the power. So we can see how this would happen, right? Materialism. And then putting value to money. Money is paper. A lot of people selling their souls, selling their life. For status and power, that it is really an illusion. Because we're not tuned into that spiritual power that our ancient civilizations, our ancient ancestors understood. But the new man is going to be the ancient man of old. That's where we're headed with this. Y'all probably like, what does all of this have to do with the eclipse? Pay attention. So now let's look at this. So here we have the X, but it's actually really a cross, right? So that takes us to the Hebrew alphabet. Tav, mark, sign, covenant, right? Tau is associated with Saturn on the tree of life. It's sphere number three. Let's look here. Right here. Bina. Womb, palace, upper mother, jubilee, world to come, will of ascension, right? Now, when we look at the ancient Egyptian, you see that they have different archetypes on the sephirate, right? Which are the hieroglyphics, spirit, right? This is actually, if you guys want to screenshot this, I think this would be actually a good tool for you to study. As above, so below. And here we have Sekert sitting in that same place as Bina, right? This is the attribute of God that deals with power, which is the energy matter. This is the omnipotent attribute of God, power, right? This attribute is what brings unlimited potential into form, right? So this is what brings things into form. Well, in, create, in the creation process, this is what brought things into the physical. This is the power. But on our, on, on our level here, this is what the force that's needed to bring about the things that our will dictates so whatever you're thinking that's a part of your will and now when you get over here to the force the omnipotent power is going to 
bring into manifestation whatever your will has told it. So here you're dealing with your the masculine and the feminine aspect of your brain. So this is what these pyramids was telling us was, was basically psychology, guys. How we think, right? So somebody's will is governed by good thoughts, good thinking, by the divine. And you're going to manifest good fruit. But if not, the force was going to manifest something else. All right. What does this have to do with the solar eclipse? I'm showing you. I'm showing you. For some, my words are going to sound like parables. This is the power that, this is also the power that brings us into union with the divine mind of God. <laughs> Now, I think it's important to let's break down the word Egypt, all right? Now, the Greek name for Egypt was called Aegyptus, A-E-G-Y-P-T-O-S. Also, I want you guys to kind of take a look at who the real Greeks were, the Etruscans, right? All this knowledge that they had, they had, and they were able to translate some things over. Now, mind you, when these other civilizations came in and took over, they distorted the information through translation a lot of times. Okay. Now, with that Greek name, how you pronounce it would be Hawat Ka Pata, right? Ptah was known as the creator god in Egypt. Okay. Egypt was known as the mansion of the spirit of Ptah. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Egypt was known as the mansion of the spirit of the creator. So when we're talking about Egypt, we're not just talking about the physical. We're talking about something also very spiritual. The cities in Egypt represented the seven chakras. But when one does a little bit more digging, and many of us know through ancient cult, through our through our different cultures that we that we that we're in a part of, that there are actually more than seven chakras, but there are actually 14 main chakras. Okay. And what happened is when we we can um look towards India, where you we all, all know about the Nagas and um who the original um Indians <laughs> They understood the 14 chakras. As a matter of fact, when the Aryans came and invaded them, they did not understand the higher chakras because they're spiritual. They didn't understand it. And then a lot of them had an issue because some of those were matriarchal societies where the high priestess was the ones that were bringing about the ancient wisdom. Okay, and a lot of these Aryan cultures, they have no respect for women. Okay, they have no respect for women. And so when I see um, indigenous people not respecting one another and specifically not respecting women, I know that this is a part of the colonization that has happened. And it's deep psychological programming that, that that's actually being um, observed because in the ancients they respected women because they understood you needed masculine and feminine and everything when I went over to Peru um, last year when you look at the how they built their sacred places they were built with masculine stones and feminine stones in life everything has to be masculine and feminine and they work together this is how God created the world Okay. 
in the Bible, it says that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So just by reading this, you understand that earth existed in a spiritual state or essence before it um, came into physical. Before it took on form, it was first spiritual. So earth and Egypt represent, now earth and Egypt represent the physical form that holds the great spirit. It's the vessel for the spirit of God. Because when we talk about God, it says that there was none beside God. There was no other God beside God. So what did God do? God separated, divided itself into many different attributes. So that it can come in, that it can also come into its creation through man and enjoy its creation. Interact. Right? Come in and interact. Get married. Have fellowship. Have societies that moved in higher level consciousness. Not in fear. Not in oppression. See, land was, see, land was ultimately a place where God could dwell within man. So as the moon, which in ancient Egypt, the moon represented Aset. Okay. Which most people know as Isis, but her name was Aset. The moon represents Aset. We also identify the moon with illusions. Because it's dealing with your psyche, your soul. Also with water, emotions, and mysteries, feminine. You cannot control water, guys. You cannot tame water. Water just is, it flows. If there's an obstacle in its way, water will flow around it or over it. <laughs> water just is. But here we have the moon covering the sun. I want us to take a look at the Hebrew letter Yod. Now, there are many systems that I could use to explain this. We could, we could explain this just straight Egyptian. We can do it through the Tao, the Chinese. And, and, and if you take a look at the, the first dynasties in China, I want y'all to take a look at who the aboriginals were that brought in Qigong, ways of breathing to connect with spirit. Because if you look at the word respiratory, it says it has that word in it called spirit. Meditation, through breathing, we could connect with the divine through certain mantras that alive in certain faculties within our being. And these mantras don't have definitions. They are sound waves because sound affects everything. That's why they use music to hit below the conscious mind and reprogram us, reprogram our psyche. The ancients knew that we had certain mantras. And I see a lot of people using a lot of mantras out here now but I know that that is the part of India where the Aryans took over because there's specific mantras that the ancient Egyptians knew and showed that aligned with certain faculties within your being that once they were um, used and alivened through meditation, you would be able to connect with aspects of God that is within you. You would aliven those, those um, things that's within you. See, when we're under fear and, and all these different things, our DNA shrivels up. It can't receive information. But when we're, when we're moving in the righteous mind, your DNA is able to um, receive information. This is your programming center. So essentially, those of you who are on ascension, you are actually being genetically we modified from within. 
That's why a lot of you have so much pains and different things going on. You're actually going through a complete DNA change right now. So let's take a look at the Hebrew alphabet, Yod. If you notice here, Yod is the arm and hand and work deed. That's what it says, right? Yod represents the hand, arm. It is the foundation of creation. Yod, Yod corresponds. Yod corresponds with the constellation Virgo, the maiden. Virgo is associated with service, but at an esoteric level, which is an alchemical level, it represents purification right? We have forces within that are able to purify, tear down strongholds. We have forces inside of joy, unlimited peace, but we have to tune into those centers, guys. And this is why I say now, there's no more of us just preaching, preaching, preaching. It's time for application. It's time for us to tune back into our spiritual ancient practices. Yod is the dot or point from which all creation emerges. This dot is also called Nun in ancient Egypt, N-U-N. It's also known as the abyss, Amenti. So when you hear people say the halls of Amenti, right? That's what they're talking about. It's the womb of creation. Ever notice that when it comes to Black, that there's always a negative connotation against Black. That we're always afraid of the dark. The dark represents the inner, the inner, the inner man, right? We're always afraid of the dark. You have um, Black ball. Everything Black is has a negative connotation. When I tell you guys this, you've been psycho psychologically we program against the dark or against black. We've been psychologically reprogrammed. There's this author called Francis Wesling, Francis Cress Wesling. I, I, I might be messing up the name. She was a instructor at Howard University in the 70s, and they fired her because she wrote a thesis that talked about how racism was really um, stem from envy towards a specific um, hue of people and that it was also um, a mental, a form of mental retardation. And they, they, they fired her from Howard University and she went on to write the book called The Isis Papers. If you ever get a chance, it, it's really a great um body of work and she calls it Isis and I told you Isis is actually offset all right so what we know about this dot all of the spectrums of light of what we call light comes from this dot all the spectrums as a matter of fact the light that we see is actually a false light because, and I know maybe we shouldn't, it's actually considered like a false light because it's manifested. It's manifested from the dark, which the ancients just knew that the dark was just another form of light. When you look out in space, all you see around us is the dark, darkness, that light that you don't see, the mysterious light, the inner light. That's the true light. The sun is a manifestation of this light. And it's also known as chaos because within this dark, there's unlimited potential, right? You ever take a child to the store and you say, hey, get what you want. They go crazy. 
They don't know what to pick. Oh, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe we have so many different ideas. It's unlimited potential. Unlimited. This is also known as the mind of God. In him I live and I have my being. All of us right now are existing within the mind of God. When you look out into space, all you see is darkness. The ancients also called this, this mark, this black dot, a white stone, white representing purification. Some say white was really considered black. <laughs> If they changed it, right? But white here representing purity. This white stone. <laughs> Where have you seen the white stone before? Precepted people. Right here. Revelations 2, 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Hear what I'm showing you guys right now. To the one who overcomes, I'm going to give you the hidden manna. The hidden manna? Huh. I will also give him a white stone inscribed with a new name. A name only, a name known only to the one who receives it. You guys, if you're listening, if your soul is resonating with, with what I'm saying today, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Look here. This is an eye. Look at this. Someone's eye. Nature speaks of creation so much. If you look at this, here's a dark and everything on the outside is manifested. The light is all manifested. Also, look at here is one of the pyramid texts. You see the sun? And then if you look here, these are all hands. Because Yod is the hand. The hand of God. The arm of God. Who is this hand and arm of God? It is you. It is men and women. Who allow themselves to be conduits for the spirit of God to take full control in their life so that God can do what God came here to do was to enjoy its creation through you. And it is through you with the right way of thinking and a right mind that God can establish order in this world. The only way to combat evil in this world is that a few good men have to stand up and become Tazadi righteous men and women. What you're seeing here is the activation of the priesthood, the Machesdek order. And as I've shown you that the Machesdek order is men and women who allow, who align with the divine mind of God. And you will go out through this earth, through how you live your life, through your teachings, using your gifts for good, for empowerment. Do not teach the people fear, empower them. We're not gonna be like those who always learning, but never really understanding the power of God. We need a few good men and women to stand up now and to align with your birthright. Some say, why does God allow all these things to happen? Because you don't know who you are yet. Revelations 2.17. You guys, I love you so very much. Thank you for stopping by the channel. Shalom and namaste. I salute the divinity within you.